shout out to my brother for barging into my room in the middle of doing this. Like, right at the end of the level, too. It's just my favorite part of doing Let's Plays is having constant interruptions throughout the video, and also dropping my controller in frustration at constantly being interrupted and getting a game over because of it. Anyway, hello all, welcome to Gudeman again. Uh, today we're going to be heading into the Eerie Way, the second level of Radish Ruins. But hey, here's a familiar face. to see here. Move along, please. You are creeping me out. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Except your creepiness. <laughs> no creepiness here. None at all. Wait. Don't I know you? I've seen you before. A cat monster. Motoro. The one Pino was talking about. I, I'm merely an innocent monster passing by. <laughs> And oh, this is you. our first meeting here, lady. It is almost dinner time, so I must bid you farewell. Hey, wait up! He's gone. Maybe he's shy or something. You know, it kind of feels to me in a way like they're trying to make Motoro out to be a, the bad guy, like the secret bad guy of the game. And I'm not sure why because he doesn't even remotely play that role. And, like, nothing really implies that he would be the secret bad guy, aside from just the fact that he's kind of secretive at this point and kind of seems a bit creepy. Anyway, got a chocolate right off the bat. And have one of these guys to take care of. These guys are honestly, like, super easy to kill, even, like, considering all that is. Like, they have that bomb attack they can do, but they barely even... Like, if you just keep spamming this one move, they'll never be able to hit you. It's great. Anyway, we can't go any further along this path for the time being, so let's just continue going the other way. Yeah. Alright, uh, just to be certain, because I don't remember. Okay, I guess there's nothing along this way, but while we're here, we might as well drill into this wall. Nothing here except those coins, but I wanted to do it anyway. Gates, I guess. I don't know for certain, but we don't want to go back the other way anyway, because this place loops around in kind of a circle, so. You know, all that, that implies is implied, I guess. And yeah, more of these guys pop up. That's nice. Man, I'm not used to how quickly my level goes down on hard mode. Just be on the safe side. Okay, no. Still nothing. Alright, so, uh, getting in here is sometimes a bit tricky. Not too hard, but... It can be somewhat finicky, because you do have that ledge grab that Green does if you get just a little off the... 
damage. There's not really that much of a reason to go down here. It's pretty basic platforming and not really any other obstacles unless you, like, don't have the goggles equipped for whatever reason. Not sure why you wouldn't, but if you did, that's, like, the only reason you would ever take damage inside that well. Oh yeah, also the swirling motion can be kind of weird at times. Like, sometimes I'll just, like, stand completely still, move to the right, then press attack, and that'll count as me doing the swirling motion. And it's kind of inconsistent on whether that'll count at all. At all. So that's a little weird, but generally speaking, when I mean to do it, then it's usually pretty easy to do it unless I'm, like, really, like, avoiding hitting certain inputs. Which we'll actually see a little later on into this video, probably. I think there's a couple more enemies down here a little further, but... Um, oh, nope. There's nothing. That was literally the only reason to go down this path. It's one of these guys. Uh, yeah, once he drills armor off, he goes down really quickly. Like, you see, I'm just doing, like, one of these attacks, and doing that gets his health down, like, pretty much halfway. Then the other one just kills him. Now watch, it's gonna turn out I missed a pot while I was in there. I forgot to examine my surroundings before heading in. Oh well. Right, right here I want to switch to the shock parts, because the shock parts are your key to getting rid of enemies in the water. At least doing it kind of easily. But right now it's still a bit finicky, because we don't have the downward lunge maneuver. We get a little later, so we kind of have to get Perrine just a little bit in the water but not so in the water that she, like, she starts swimming. Which is a really hard line to cross. But, hey, I managed to there, I guess. Nope, hang on. Back to the fire parts. Oh, you motherfucker. Well, uh, I guess let's just wait for him to die in the water, like, eight years later. And this is the most I've seen my level go up and then back down again, then back up again. Probably my entire time playing this game, honestly. Alright, platforming here is a bit tricky. Uh, you might wonder what the point of it is, considering- Oh, oh, shit, shit, shit! Considering you can theoretically just, like, go over here, but, uh... Well, I guess I don't need to explain why that's not actually possible anymore. Convenient. 
not so convenient is that I have to do this again. Uh, it's probably a little easier to do this if you, like, try to jump just a little before the platform stops. Just because depth perception in this game is really weird. Like, part of it's just because you don't have that second, like, vertical axis for camera control. It's so, like if I tilt the stick up or down right now, it does nothing. And I'm not entirely sure why, since this game was a 2004 release, and uh, second stick camera controls were standard for games by this point. It's a little weird. Then again, this was like a PC release. Well, a Japanese PC release specifically, and Japanese PC games are weird. Like, they control very differently from how a lot of, like, Western developed PC games tend to do. It's like. I actually don't know if I've shown this in this Let's Play yet, but, um. Uh, if you play this game with keyboard and mouse, you can, if you want, use the arrow keys to move... Oh, I guess right now there are sets of camera controls. That's weird. What do I have sets of movement, then? I am extremely confused. <laughs> um, okay, I guess my controls are bound really weird, but, um... Yeah, you, you could use keys on the keyboard to move. Or, you could use this pointer. And, like, click the right button to move in whichever direction you fancy. I don't know why anyone would ever do this, but you can totally do it if you want. It is really awkward, and also jumping with the spacebar is weirdly bugged. Uh, this is what happens if I hold down the spacebar. You don't get out if you hold down the whatever you have mapped to jump on the controller. So yeah, this is funny. And you just, like, let go of the space bar to do a proper jump. Uh, if you, for some reason, have never played a 3D platformer, or indeed a platformer before, um, that is terrible specifically because, like, when you're playing a platformer, a lot of platformers have this thing where, like, the longer you hold down the jump button, the higher you jump. It's not like that in Gudeman. There's like a single fixed arc to your jump in Gudeman. But in a lot of platformers, the longer you hold down the jump button, the higher you jump. And they do that specifically because, like, you know, there's not as much precision with the controller as if you were to jump in real life, I guess. I think I accidentally skipped a cutscene just now. That's, uh... Certainly something. I think this is about the end of this level, um, yeah, looks that way, so, let's get ourselves a dresser, or shoebox, I guess.
Oh! Oh, this actually unlocks one of those, uh, special bonus things, so, um... Anyway, now that we've unlocked one of these, I guess I should real quick talk about this. Uh, so this is a little further on into the Potato Ruins. Now you might think, oh, we're gonna be going back to these levels for, like, special bonus stuff in the bobs. We're gonna, like, get more bosses and more story stuff in the Potato Ruins and, uh, don't hold your breath. Uh, literally, like, all this is, is just the, um, what's it called? The meter corridor, but backwards and with some different enemy placements. And also different music, and, like, it's blue-tinted, I guess. That's weird. Um, there's one of these for, like, every level in the game. At least every, like, normal level. So, like... There's two starting levels and then the boss for each world. Those are what you're, like, required to go to. And then after that, later on in the game, you'll unlock this sort of, like, remix version of the levels. Uh, the first one you encounter will be based on the second, and then the next one after that will be based on the first, and there is no remix encounter for the boss. Although well, there will be something similar to that, like, way later on, that you can unlock. I haven't unlocked it on computer version of Grudeman yet, but maybe sometime I will. But yeah, um, if you see me get confused about, like, something that's supposedly there but isn't actually, uh, that's because it's probably in the second version of the level. And by the way, the remix versions of each level, entirely optional. Like, you only need to go through them if you want to get completion. And see all that there is to see, or whatever. Uh, we'll be saving those for after we've done the vanilla main campaign, as it were. But, yeah. All that being said, I guess next time on Goodyman, a monstrous adventure, we'll be taking on the Forest Ballroom, the boss level of the Radish Woods. Take care, guys.